Hello everybody. This is a new beginning. We are going to talk about modernism in literature. And our video every day at 6 video period is also undergoing a transformation. Modernism was a response to so many things that happened in the 19th century. Let me tell you a little bit of that history. Remember guys, in the 16th century, there was humanism and renaissance. At that time, everything changed. There was a new hope, a new focus on the greatness of the human being, the beauty of the human being, the values of humanity. Before that, in the medieval period, everything was dark. Human being was not celebrated. Human life was not celebrated. Human beings were considered sinners. There was oppression. There was injustice. All that changed in the Renaissance when humanism dawned. And 16th century, 17th century, 18th century, it went on. In the 19th century, again changes. Throughout these four centuries of humanism, humanism did not remain the same. It was not static. Sometimes there was a focus on human ideas and reason, thinking. Sometimes the focus was on emotion and beauty, romanticism. But why did all these things change in the 19th century? Because the conditions of life changed. Society changed, politics changed, economics changed. All because of industrialization. Industrialization means setting up factories of mass production. Before that, people were making things with their hands. They were living in villages. Relationships mattered. Life was not so fast. But with the establishment of industries or factories, mass production started. A materialistic society emerged. There was even more oppression and injustice. And people got divided in many ways. New ideologies came into being, resulting in wars, conflicts, political transformations. So the industries brought inequality. The rich, wealthy factory owners or the bourgeoisie against the working class, the proletariat. The working classes were exploited to a great extent. They did not have good living conditions. They did not get equal wages. All this led to riots, social problems of starvation and so on. So the 19th century was a time of great changes, tumultuous changes. And people kind of lost their belief in truth, in reality. They lost their belief in values. They began to question established ideas. Also because of Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin brought a new era with his origin of species. Darwin's evolutionary theory proved that. The Bible is not literally true. That probably man is not after all made in the image of God because it looks like he evolved from lesser animals and apes. So how do you reconcile these conflicting ideas of science and religion? How do you uh, address all those beliefs and earlier established ideas of the four centuries of humanism now when you know that much of it was probably not true. The enlightenment of the 18th century had brought reason. The idea of progress. Industrialization looked like progress. But it only led to even more squalor and misery at least in some sections of the society. So, is industrialization and progress so great? Look at colonialism, imperialism. It looked like imperialism is good. The white people are doing their responsibility. 
the white man's burden of civilizing the rest of the world. But colonies started to clamor for freedom, fight for freedom. People began to question, in the West itself, people began to question uh, the values of imperialism. It looked like things are seriously wrong. So realism is questioned. At the end of the 19th century, there are avant-garde movements that questioned realism, that experimented with form and color and technique. The avant-garde movements are experimental movements that broke away from the traditions of art and literature, unsettling the readers, causing uh, a great upsetting reaction in the readers, rejecting mainstream ideas of morality and life and writing. So the avant-garde movements shook up the Western mind, the Western culture to a great extent. And it looked like life is fragmented. That you can't believe in anything as permanent. Everything is transient and temporary. Into this kind of a situation comes the world war. The first world war. Recently, there was a war uh, between Ukraine and Russia. We were all watching with bated breath. People struggling for their lives. Lots of innocent people dying. You know, war is not a great thing. The first world war was supposed to be a war that will end all wars. We thought, they thought that this is good. Let it come. Patriotism is good. Nationalism is good. They thought, but when the war began, things changed. It was not so easy to fight and kill and get something positive out of it. No, like Wilfred Owen, many people began to realize the pity and horror of war. So the world war was a disillusioning impact, had a disillusioning effect on the Western mind. And remember, the world war was from 1914 to 18. Almost immediately after that, in the, 19, in the year 1929, came the Great Depression. There was a crash of the stock market, especially in America. It led to terrible disasters. The failure of the American dream. Americans believed in progress, success. Everything failed. In the European countries also, the repercussions were severe. The Great Depression led to massive unemployment. The Great Depression led to poverty, people committing suicide, drugs, depression. It was terrible. It looked like a moral wasteland. Everywhere, people losing belief in social institutions falling apart. People don't know what to believe in anymore. It is indeed a metaphorically a wasteland where everything is broken. Like a, can you imagine a city after war? It is like a wasteland. Everything is broken. People are dying, dead. So where are the values? What is truth? Where is humanity heading to? Looking at the past, they saw there were a lot of wonderful things in the past. Great monuments, great writers, great many things. But right now, looking at the past from the 20th century, from the beginning of the 20th century, it looked like everything is but a disaster. Everything looks like debris of the past. How to make sense of the past? How to put all this together once again? How to start life? A new, this is the problem for the modernist. And when the modernist looks at the future, there is nothing, no hope, no light. There is only uncertainty. So in the early 20th century, all these changes related to the Industrial Revolution, the two world wars, the Great Depression, all these disconcerting events led to an anxiety an uncertainty that we call modernism. Following the First World War, there were many political issues. You know that this is the time when Mussolini in Italy started fascism. Then there was Hitler who upheld Nazism. 
or Aryan supremacy, which eventually led to the Second World War. So modernism that came in between the two world wars were reacting to these political developments, which at the beginning looked good and they had a lot of hope, but it went wrong. The Western world that had already lived through the French Revolution and its disastrous consequences were not ready. The, the Western world was not ready for another disaster. They were anxious. They were terrified. Along with that, there is the rise of communism. For the Western capitalists, communism looked like another disaster. There was a revival of Catholicism, a revival of humanism at this time. All these show the desperate attempts of the Westerners, the thinkers, the writers, the philosophers. They were desperately trying to make sense of their reality, to somehow bring about a unified world order, to somehow solve the problems. And it all reflected in literature. So modernism is a reaction to a fragmented world, a society that is fast breaking down and modernism is trying to make sense of it. This was a time when the margins began to talk back to the center. The working classes were talking back. The colonized people were gaining freedom. Women were organizing. There were many civil rights movements, suffragette movements. This was also the time when capitalism was developing, even though it had disastrous consequences like the depression. A mass consumer society was developing. It was a very chaotic period. Modernism is a very heterogeneous approach to this chaos and anarchy. The anarchy and futility that is contemporary history, like T.S. Eliot said. In order to make sense of this chaos, writers tried to employ techniques like the mythical method. They resorted to symbols or objective correlatives. They tried to bring the mind of the human being into focus, like in expressionism or surrealism, rather than focusing on external reality through techniques like stream of consciousness, epiphany, etc., or automatic writing, modernists tried to map the human psyche. So in modernism, there are new forms of expression. There is a very strong influence of Sigmund Freud and his understanding of the human mind. There is experimentation with meter and rhyme and pagination, I mean the page setting, things like that to bring into for a new kind of reality. Modernism wanted to understand that reality is complex. Modernism tried to represent the complexity of reality and society through these techniques. They attempted to show society as fragmented. They lamented this loss of unity and tried to create a sense of unity among this fragmentation. In this world of fragmentation and futility, the modernists resorted or went back to the classics, the canonical texts. They believed that the classics or the canon has some values that we can learn from, through which we can repair the disasters that we live with. T.S. Eliot, for example, turned back to the metaphysical poets and their unified sensibility, for example. Penguin, the publisher, was established for the revival of the classics. And uh, there was a new attempt to embrace the values of humanism in movements like the new humanism. So when did modernism come into being? Probably somewhere in the 19th century any time between 1850 or 1890s. On or about December 1910, human nature changed. December 1910 is the time dramatically uh, given by Virginia Woolf. This is a time when liberal humanism weakens. Values of the human being 
the values of a humanist literature are all weakened in modernism. They don't talk about uh, humanism anymore. They talk about chaos, the chaotic experience of war, the slackening of family ties, local and religious ties. All are reflected in the anti-humanistic te techniques of modernism. In modernist literature, there is a great deal of importance given to subjectivity, against objectivity, against objective truth, against the omniscient third person narrator. Modernism presents subjectivity and the subjective consciousness presents, uh, presented through stream of consciousness, etc. is discernible in modernism. Fragmentation, self-reflexivity, parody and pastiche. These are all techniques used by modernist writers. Now, when I talk about modernism, you might be wondering, so where did postmodernism come and how did it happen? Of course, our videos, our everyday at six videopedia is moving into modernist literature. I'll be talking about modernist writers in the coming videos, but it would merit our understanding of modernism to talk a little bit about postmodernism as well. Postmodernism was a reaction to modernism as well as a continuation of it. Postmodernism does not lament fragmentation. Postmodernism celebrates fragmentation because postmodernism understands that unity is not even possible. Postmodernism understands that unity or meaning or truth or reality are not even possible. And postmodernism shows a world without permanences, without unities, without fixities. Postmodernism embraces the values of post-structuralism. Identity is a construct. Reality, truth are constructs. You can't even construct it through literature. While modernists attempted to construct a reality, even though it is not already there, you can construct it. That is what modernists believed. Postmodernists believe that you can't even construct reality. It's a continually postponed process. Postmodernism understands meaning as plural, hybrid, and postmodernism uh, also employs some of the techniques of modernism, like metafiction, like parody and pastiche, but for a different end. But to show that there is no permanent reality, there are no fixed identities. Everything is in a state of flux continually postponed and constructed. So these are the uh, main ideas relating to modernism and postmodernism. Now, modernism is not one single homogeneous movement. Modernism is a very diverse movement. I think I already said that. Within modernism, there are many approaches. D.H. Lawrence wrote very poetic prose and did not formally experiment. Whereas James Joyce was an experimenter. E.M. Foster uh, or Virginia Woolf delved deep into characters. Whereas Ezra Pound did not talk about character very much. He presented the technique of ideogramic method or presenting concrete images to represent abstract ideas. So modernism is very diverse. Within modernism, there is something called high modernism. The high point of modernism, at which time there was unparalleled range and rapidity of change. The high modernists are Lawrence, D.H. Lawrence, Ezra Pounds, James Joyce, Virginia Woolf, T.S. Eliot. There will be independent videos on all these writers. Please watch them. All these writers of high modernism employed a very austere style, very strict and austere style an anti-humanist vision. They had faith in science and technology to some extent, but increasingly they lost that faith also. They all of them employed a fragmented form and disregarded socio-cultural, political context to some extent because they needed a new interpretation of reality and life 
they completely broke from the prevailing formal techniques and took refuge in a mythical past. As I told you, T.S. Eliot talked about the mythical method. There was a very indirect or elliptical structure in works employing self-reflexivity or metafiction. Very unrealistic, experimental kind of works. Modernism existed in painting, in impressionism. Uh, it appeared for the first time. And modernism went on to influence the other arts eventually. It was a widespread European movement. It spread over Europe and uh, America very soon in a couple of decades. And by the time the Second World War began, modernism had become a mainstream movement in Euro-American academia. So that is in a nutshell about modernism. We will be talking in detail about modernist writers. But I would also please remind you, please read a lot about modernism and these writers on your own. Watch YouTube videos, not only lectures, but also documentaries and things. Read up on the avant-garde. Taste the actual style of modernists. It will be extremely useful for you to remember and to apply your knowledge in exams if you do your own reading. So please watch out for the other videos on modernism on individual writers that will be coming up. Thank you very much. Happy reading.